Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about how to insert a image into a website. And for this example, we're going to be using a logo, which we're going to insert into the header that we created in the last episode. Now, in case you guys want to, you can actually go ahead and download the images I'm using for this episode in the description of this video. And then you can just kind of really quickly follow along on this episode. Now, if you guys want to, of course, you can also just go ahead and download something from the internet or create your own logo that you can use in this episode. Now, what we're going to talk about is a couple of different ways we can insert an image. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the formats of images you can use when it comes to uploading to a website. Now, before we do any of that, we do actually need to include the images inside our root folder. So as you guys can see, I do actually have my root folder open over on the left side here. And I do have a random image folder open from my computer somewhere over here that includes the two images we're going to be using for this episode. Now, one thing you should notice is that one format, the one I have on the left here, is a PNG image, which means that I have, well, I did actually make a logo that had some background that needed to be transparent. So I just went ahead and created a PNG image since that, of course, can make some of the background transparent. Now, we can also use JPEGs if you want. You can also use GIFs. You can use all kinds of image formats. You can even use a format called SVG. Now, you might be asking, what is SVG? Well, when it comes to inserting images to a website, you can actually insert both pixelated images and you can insert uh, vector images, meaning that when you zoom in on your screen or inside the browser, your image is never going to get pixelated. Now, some benefits of having an SVG image, like I said, is that it's going to be much more high resolution. Some non-benefits is going to be that some browsers like Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge is not completely optimized for these kind of images. You might have some issues if you have created, for example, layer masks inside the image. Um, it's going to show up in a little funky way inside these browsers. Now, you can still see the images, but they're just going to look weird. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to go ahead and work with the PNG image first. And then just to kind of show us an example at the very end, I'm going to show you guys the SVG image. Now, if you have a question about how you can actually create SVG images, uh, some programs such as Illustrator and Photoshop, well, not Photoshop, I'm not quite sure about that one, but I know Illustrator can actually save SVG images. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go into our code inside our HTML file, our index.html, and inside the header, right before the nav, we're going to go ahead and include a image tag. Now, the way you do this is by opening up the code, writing img space, and then you're going to say SRC for source equal to and then quote, uh, quotation marks. And then inside here, you need to write the path to the image. Now, we didn't actually include the image into our root folder yet, so we should probably do that straight away. Inside my root folder, I'm just going to go ahead and create a folder called IMG for image. You don't have to call it IMG. You can call whatever you want. I'm just calling it IMG because that's what I'm used to. I'm going to go ahead and copy the two images we have over here inside our little example. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in here inside my image folder. Now that we have it inside our root folder, and again, just to remind you guys, do not use images from your computer on your website because when you need to upload the website, it's going to be a pain in the butt to try and go inside your computer and find all the images, put it inside your root folder, and then change all the linking to these images because it needs to work like that when you do actually upload the website. So just make it a habit to only use materials inside your root folder on your website. So inside our image source tag, we're just going to go ahead and close off the tag at the very end here. Now, some people will argue that you need to include a backslash at the very end of the tag. Uh, you don't have to in HTML5 anymore. They actually eliminated that. And you don't need to close off the image by writing backslash IMG or anything. So you just need to include the image and then the source equal to, and then you can write the path. So we wrote it inside, oh, like we pasted it inside a folder called IMG backslash, and then name the file. And the one we have is one called logo.png. Now, another thing you can add inside the image tag as a parameter could, for example, be alt. Now, you might be asking, what is alt? Well, when it comes to Google searching and you want people to be able to find your images, right now, Google does not know what is on this image. 
we know that it's a logo and we know it's a logo for MM Toots, at least for my example it is, but Google does not know that. So what we can do inside the alt tag is include a couple of keywords that will define what is on this image. So I can actually write MM Toots space and then I can add another word such as logo. So now we have some names for this image. So at least, you know, Google knows what's on this image. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save it. Then I'm going to go ahead and open up our website inside the browser. Inside Chrome, preferably. And then we can actually see that we have a image up here in the very top corner. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in for you guys so you can see. Now, as I zoom in, you guys will notice it's very pixelated. And that is because, like I said, we're using a pixelated image. If I were to include a SVG image instead, if I go back into the code and I just link to my SVG image instead, instead of writing .png, I'm going to write .svg. Save it. And then I'm going to refresh my image. And as you guys can see, whoa, it suddenly got very big and it's very crisp, as you guys may notice. So using SVG images is going to make it into a vector, like I said, and it's going to always remain crisp. Now, like I said, we're not going to be using SVG images in this example because not all browsers are quite happy with it yet. And we want to make sure that even people using Internet Explorer is going to be able to see the images. So we're going to go ahead and use PNG. Save it and refresh. Now, when it comes to displaying the logo, you guys may notice that the header is not quite uh, tall enough to contain the logo. So we're going to go ahead and increase the size of the image. Now, it's very important that we know exactly how big the image is. I know for a fact that my image is 92 times 102 in uh, width, and length, uh, width and height. If not, it's the other way around. We can always right click if you're in doubt. You can go in and you can right click your image, go to properties, and then go to details. And then you can see that it is in fact 92 width and 102 height, which is what I said. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and go into our style sheet and then when we start the header which is a bit further down from our reset sheet down here we can go ahead and give it a height as a little bit larger than our logo was in height which was 102 so we're going to make this one 140 pixels high i'm going to refresh my browser and as you guys can see we now have some extra space now what i want to do here is i want to go ahead and take my logo and i want to move it from the top a little bit down because I want it to be just so there's a little bit of space at the bottom. So I'm going to go back into my style sheet and then I'm going to go down below our header styling. I'm going to go ahead and say, well, we have the header. And inside the header, by clicking space, we have a image. So every time you add a space after a little piece of tag inside a style sheet, you say, OK, inside this tag, we have another tag or another class or another div, which we'll get to at some point. But just know that you can write space to say we have something inside something else. So inside a header, we have an image that I would like to style this way. And then we can actually start styling it. So we're going to say, well, we want it to have a margin dash top colon. And we would like it to move from the top with about, eh, let's say, 40 pixels, which is probably too much. But let's just go ahead and check. There we go. So it's a little bit too much. So we're just going to go ahead and add a slightly less, maybe 30. Check it again. And that seems to be a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that for now. Now, another problem we have is we do actually need to take this image and put it a little bit further to the center of the screen because right now if I were to view this at 100% which is this right here you guys can see the image is all the way to the left now that could be fine if you want a website that starts all the way from the left side of the screen but if you want one of those websites that has been centered we're gonna to have to talk about something called a wrapper which I'll likely get to in the next episode now for now we're just gonna go ahead and stick with the images so this is how we insert one kind of image. And like I said, this is, you know, th this is actually the typical way to do it. But sometimes we would like to include some kind of hover effect. We didn't really talk about hover effects, but just to kind of demonstrate why the other way of inserting images could potentially be better. I'm going to go ahead and include a little example for you guys. So inside our style sheet or inside our HTML sheet, in fact, we're going to go ahead and include another image below. But as you guys may notice, I'm not actually going to create an image. I'm actually going to create a 
div, which we talked about a couple of times before. I did actually mention it, um, but essentially a div is a empty object. So right now it didn't define uh, the width or the height or the background color, or it's just simply, a, you know, like an object, like a box. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a div. And then I need to give this div a name. Well, we don't actually have to, but it's just much easier to do it. And then I can sort of explain on the way why we're giving it a name. Sometimes, however, you do have an object on your website that there will be multiple of. Let's say a div, for example, you're possibly gonna have a lot of divs on your website. Now each div, if you want to style them individually, you're gonna have to give them a unique name. So we can go into our style sheet and then say we want to style this div, which has this name. So we only style a specific div. So we target this div specifically. Now by doing that, we can write either a class or an ID. And the difference between these two is that an ID name, can there can only be one of them. A class name, we can have multiple of, meaning that I can actually go ahead and write a class here, equal to, quotation marks, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this one test. Not trust, test. So now we gave this div a name called test, and I can actually go ahead and copy this one, and then say, oh, well, I need to have two images next to each other, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it right below here, and this would actually be okay. Now, if I were to change this, and make an ID as test, I would not be able to, well, we would be able to, but it's not ideal to have two divs because a ID is very unique and there should only be one. So for this example, we're just gonna go ahead and use an ID because we're just gonna be using one for this example. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into our style sheet and then we need to start styling this div. So inside our style sheet below our header image, I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, we do have a ID by writing the hashtag symbol. We have an ID called test. And I'm gonna go ahead and style it with this code. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a width as 92 pixels because that's what I know my image is in width. And I'm gonna give it a height as 102 pixels. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this div a background color, or not a background color, a background image. Because like I said, we do actually need to um, include some kind of image in here because otherwise it's just gonna be a regular div. So in order to create an image, we're gonna to have to give this div a background image. So we're gonna say background dash IMG colon. Now, okay, so it's not IMG, it's actually image. There we go. So inside here, we need to write the path to the image. So we're gonna write URL, and then we're gonna write the, uh, what do you call it, the parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we're gonna write the path. So it's inside a folder called img, backslash, logo, dot png, save it. So now, if I go ahead and go refresh my website, you'll notice, well, we do actually have anything yet, and there's something we did wrong in here. Okay, so I did actually find out why we couldn't see the image inside the browser, which is because our style sheet is actually inside a folder called CSS, and we need to tell it in the path to the image that we do actually need to go back a folder into the main part of the root folder, and then inside a folder called image, and then find the logo. So inside the path to our image inside the style sheet, we're gonna go ahead and write dot dot backslash and then image backslash logo.png because the dot dot backslash means that we're going back a folder and then we're going inside the image folder which we have one folder back. So saving it this way and then refreshing the browser, you'll notice that we do actually have two images now. We have the first one, which we can actually hold and drag the image around because we can see it's an image. Then we have the second one, which is a div box of the background with the image. And we can actually drag and hold and move it around, which is because it is not a real image. Now you might be asking, what are some of the pros and cons of doing it these two ways? Well, first of all, like I did actually mention with the alt tags, if you want to be able to search on Google and find the image and use maybe some search words for SEO optimization, which you guys might not know what is, uh, but essentially SEO optimization helps your website become more visible. And doing it the regular, way, the regular way as an image like this, is gonna make it easier for Google to find your image. Now doing it 
as a div with the background as the image is not as SEO friendly as a regular image, but you can in fact do some really cool hover effects. Let's say for example, I want to change the background of the image from orange to maybe blue when I hover on it. We cannot really do that with a image. So instead we do actually need to do it as a div where we go in and say, okay, well, when we hover on it, I want to change it inside the style sheet to have, you know, to switch it out with a different kind of image. So that's the two different ways of doing it. And that's essentially how we can insert images into our website. Now for this example, we're not gonna be using a hover effect. So we're just gonna keep the regular image we have up here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the div inside our, uh, first of all, inside our style sheet. By the way, we did actually talk about creating a styling for a ID, which is by using hashtag. If you had a class instead of an ID, the way to do it was to write a punctuation mark because then you refer to a class instead of a div called test. So just in case you guys need to know that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this again, save it. I'm gonna go into my index file and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete my div box again. So we only have the image file and then save it. So now our website should look something like this. So having it like this, uh, we're gonna go ahead and end off this episode. And then in the next episode, like I said, we're gonna talk about how to center the image. So not center it, but move it so that it's aligned more closer to the center so it's not all the way to the left side. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.